When you have a lot of data, it could be quite useful to group that data by one of your fields, by the values of one of your fields, so to speak. Taking our sample report to group, we have our 349,000 records and they're just tabular laid out. It would be quite useful if I could group these, perhaps by their state. That will make things a little tidier, not just sort them so they're in state order, but actually physically create a group with the state name as the heading. Well, to create a group in Crystal Reports, we go to the Group Expert or to the Insert Group icon. So that's the Insert Group option or the Group Expert is here. Personally, I prefer to go to the Group Expert because then I can see if there's already some grouping. If I just choose insert group, it inserts a group without any regard for the groupings that are already there. So using the group expert, I see I don't have any groupings already, but I would like to group by the state name. So I choose the state name, click to move that over to the right hand side, and it's now being grouped by the state name. There are some options to visit, one of which is to sort them by the group name, which is state name, but you can choose to sort them by a different field. Sometimes if you're using multiple tables, you have the ID and you want them in ID order, but you still like to see the state name. Well, we want them in state name to be viewed and we want them in state name order. So they're going to be in alphabetical order of state name. Further options are to customize that group name field, keep the group together. So should the group sort of split a page, which is likely to do when you have 349,000 records, and you want to repeat the group header on each page. So if our first state, which could be Alaska, splits more than one page, do you want the group heading to be on the second page? It's an option that you might want to just simply place a tick on and the mechanics will be created for you. So those are the options we can visit. By clicking OK, the grouping will take place. So we still have 349,000 records, but they're now all grouped by state. So if I go back to the first page, I can see that Alabama is actually the first state, not Alaska. Obviously, my alphabetical coordination is not as high as I thought. Now you get the group navigation tree on the left, which is extremely useful when you've got groups and we can widen this column because I can use it to jump to navigate effectively around the report. So I can jump straight through to the California people or the Indiana people or the Kentucky people. And it jumps straight to that group. So we can see what's occurred here in design is a group header and a group footer has been inserted around the details section. And in that group header, we get a group header name, which is the value of the field we've grouped on. Then all of the details for that group, then a group footer, and it comes back around this loop to repeat the second state in this case. So you can actually format the group name to be a lot bigger than the rest. Just so it stands out a bit more really. So in preview, you then get a larger group name before it repeats all the people. One other quite common thing that I would tend to do is move all the labels from the page header. So if I go to the page header group here and go right click, select all section objects, I can move them on mass into the group header. That way, when I go to a group, I can see the headings. District of Columbia, I can see the headings. So that's adding a group based on one of the fields in your data, and then all the unique values within that grouping then effectively cause a new group. So every time it comes across a new state, it starts a new group. Now, when it comes to grouping, some fields are more logical than others. And if you choose a field with too many variations, then the grouping doesn't really make much sense. So if we go back to the group expert and remove this one, and then say, for example, we're to add in the last name, and then OK. Now, Crystal will manage to do the grouping on each last name, but if they're not unique enough, then you end up with very few lines within each group. So you can see here, there's only one Caponi. There's only two caps. There's a few Capras, but that wouldn't really lend itself to be the most ideal type of grouping because we end up with lots of group options. Best type of grouping are ones that manage to group the data in usable lumps but they need to be logical, usable lumps. So some fields lend themselves better than others. And in the case of our data, if I remove that, really there's only the state name that would do, perhaps the company name, if all these people all work for different companies, 
that won't be a very useful one either. There's not many worth for each company. Lots of single ones there, which is not a very good grouping option. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're trying to pick a grouping field in that it must be really a field with a lot of repeating data. In our case, the state name is ideal. Or you can actually build your own groups that would make logical sense to yourself. For example, we could pick on the last sale date and ask it to group by month. So we go back into the group expert. Let's remove client company. Choose the last sale date. Now before we click OK, we go into options. And because we've chosen a date field, we can choose for the group to be grouped by a sensible date partition, which could be a year. Or in the case of our data, because all the data is actually from one year, let's choose month. OK. OK. The grouping takes place. And you find we have 12 groups for all of the months of 2011. That will then allow you to jump to that point in the report. So the grouping is about sensibly grouping your data together in logical lumps. So you need to pick on a field that has some repeating values so that the grouping can take place. Or cleverly, as we've done here with the date field, is we can choose any of the normal date partitions. If we look again in the options, you'll see we can choose any of the normal date partitions to then group the data by. Rather than the actual date value in the database, we can choose what month that falls in, or what year that falls in, or what week that falls in. We can also group by more than one field, just as you can filter and sort by more than one field. If we take the state name, for example, across again, and perhaps move that up to be the first grouping, so it will group firstly by state name, and then within each state by what effectively is the 12 months of 2011. OK. And we then see in our navigation tree each of the states which can be expanding out to view each of the months. So I can look at our Kansas, February 2011. In design, this is displayed as two lots of grouping. So group header and footer two goes around the detail section. That's our last date field. And then group header one is the state name. So when the report builds, it actually does the first state name, the first month, all the details, skip through the footers because they're empty, come back round to the second group header two, and it does all the group header twos until they're extinguished, then moves on to the next group header one. So it does all the months for the first state before it moves on to the second state. And we can see that in the report that that works well. We see the state, the 12 months, then the next state, then the 12 months. So we have a, a double level of grouping. And the idea here is to just make the report a bit more presentable, make more sense to the relevant parties.